During the life of the Sega CD, game makers began packaging games together in bundles and compilations, both to be included with new hardware, as well as to add value to games long past their expiration date. The reduced cost of CD manufacturing meant that multiple retail discs could be packaged as one and still be profitable, while the massive increase in storage size on a CD meant that multiple cartridge games could be stored with no problem. This allowed a number of these releases for the Sega CD and Mega CD, and in this episode, we will be taking a look at them. I've got nine bundles and compilations here, ranging from some great arcade classics to even some pretty crappy full motion video games. I hope you guys enjoy Sega CD The Compilations. In 1994, Sony ImageSoft released the double deal buy one get one free pack of Hook and Three Ninjas Kick Back. Most of you are well aware of the first game Hook, as it is a standalone early release on the Sega CD shortly after its launch. The Sega CD version features the John Williams soundtrack from the film, as well as a ton of voice acted scenes, though the actors are different from the film. It's quite the decent platformer and was developed by none other than Core Design. The other title here is Three Ninjas Kick Back, an enhanced port of the cartridge game that appeared on the Sega Genesis as well. The difference is that while Hook got a standalone release for the Sega CD, Three Ninjas Kick Back only appeared on the platform in this bundle. It has new first-person scaling stages that involve rollerblading and hang gliding, new cinemas of the grandfather explaining what to do in each area, and a CD quality soundtrack. You get to choose from the three kids in the film and most of the gameplay involves running from something, finding stuff, or simply getting from point A to point B. The gameplay is actually quite responsive and while it wins no points for originality, it does what it does well enough to keep your attention. The additional stages used a modified engine from Batman Returns on the Sega CD, which was also developed by the same company, Malibu Interactive. In early 1994, Sega released the internally developed Sega Games Can Volume 1. This compilation was released only in Japan and in special packages that were literally game cans holding the CD. The entire disc is made up of Sega Mega Net games, which were small downloadable games over the Mega Modem, which of course only was available in Japan. The first of these games was Flicky, a port of the arcade classic that was on the Genesis and Mega Drive as a standalone early release. You also get Hyper Marbles, which is a combat game that has you trying to bump your enemies into an electric field to destroy them. You get increasingly difficult stages and more foes to deal with as you get deeper into it. Paddle Fighter is basically just an air hockey game with power-ups like magnetic paddles and electric fields that block the goal. The presentation is simple, but it can be fun with two players. Pyramid Magic is a series of games that has you navigating tricky stages to find the items and keys you need to keep going. This is a very challenging game and quite good. Its multiple sequels are on the disc as well. Sega also included four of the Fantasy Star 2 text adventures here, and unfortunately, they are all in Japanese. Luckily, these games have been fan-translated and are fully playable in emulators and on flashcards. These are strictly old-school text adventures and must be read carefully to not only follow the story, but also to complete actions in the game to keep moving. Sega Games Can Volume 1 was released at the budget price of 4,000 yen and is still quite affordable today. Right around the same time, Sega also released Sega Games Can Volume 2, which added an additional 12 games to the compilation. The first of these is 16T, 
which has a programmer chasing down bugs in a computer program and trying to squash them with 16 ton weights. The stages wrap around themselves and it's far too easy to kill yourself, making it a snooze fest quickly. Next up is Award, Hero in the Sky, an action title that has you trying to get through danger latent stages using propulsion based mechanics that relies heavily on momentum to dictate its difficulty. It's real easy to overshoot your target here and again kill yourself over and over. You do get used to it and there can be some fun had, but it's overly simplistic and gets tiresome fast. The Genesis classic Fatal Labyrinth is here as well. You guys know this one. Enter random generated dungeons and survive. This one has a ton of loot to find and is actually quite fun. No two games are ever the same. Doki Doki Penguin Land MD was a special version of the game with enhanced visuals and sound. Old school fans will recognize this instantly as the egg to the bottom of the screen game. The object beyond that is to avoid enemies and keep your egg intact. Let it fall too far or let an enemy get at it and it's game over. This is an excellent puzzle game and one of the best on this compilation. Metal City is a gambling game that has things like poker, blackjack, and slots. Super simple presentation makes this one a mild curiosity at best. You guys know these games all too well and without people to play with, what's the point? There are also four more Fantasy Star 2 text adventures here, and again they have English translations you can find. I'll put a link in the description for those interested. Putter Golf is a mini golf game with fantastical courses and unforgiving mechanics that can result in a single course ruining an entire play session. You do get better at it with practice, but it's still really tough to stay consistent. Robot Battler looks to be a decent arena combat game, but the heavy Japanese text makes me feel like I'm missing something. You have to build your robot and arm him before each game, but the AI just dogs me out no matter what I do. I buy the most expensive weapon, ass is whooped. I set my stats high, ass is whooped. I mean it's the first damn enemy. The Sega Master System classic Teddy Boy Blues is here in all its glory as well. I know many of you are fans of this one and the Genesis does it proud in both visuals and sound. Gameplay is spot on and it wraps up this very decent compilation in fine style. One of the hardest games I have ever played is Out of This World. I mean, I adored the opening cinema, setting and visuals of this one, but good lord did the deaths come fast and often. Each new screen I encountered almost guaranteed you die simply because you had no idea what to do until the Grim Reaper firmly had his hands around your throat. The Sega CD received its sequel, Heart of the Alien, in 1994, which included the original as well. And as hard as the original was, the sequel is even worse. You need godlike reflexes to get anywhere in this game. The opening scene took me 30 minutes to get down so I could move on, and I die time and time again. Those of you with dedication and persistence will likely find a game worth playing. The rest will have your asses handed to you for 20 minutes or so, rage quitting to some colorful expletives. <laughs> In 1994, Sony ImageSoft was back with another double deal buy one get one free pack, this time including the horror icons Bram Stoker's Dracula and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Dracula had a previous standalone release on the Sega CD, and is completely different from the version made for the Genesis. Here we get digitized characters and enemies set against full motion video backdrops. The effect looks kinda cool, almost 3D in nature but it all moves along slow and choppy. The gameplay is made up of little more than battling bats and rats for the first quarter of the game, hammering the fun factor while you look for something to bring you back. Frankenstein is only available in this pack and never had a standalone Sega CD release in any region. It's also completely different from the Genesis game of the same name. 
Here you control the monster in an adventure game that is full of exploration, items to find, people to talk to, and exposition into the thinking of the tragic main character. The developers could have left it there and this may have been a solid game, but they decided to throw in an awful one-on-one -on -one fighting game engine for you to deal with. That's right, classic literature fans. Remember that scene from the book where Dr. Frankenstein did martial arts moves on the monster and whooped his candy ass? Well, it's here in all its glory to frustrate and turn you away. Some fights can be avoided, but it's infuriating when some scrub enemy pops out of the blue and ends your adventure. Even worse, there are basic enemies like spiders that will rob you of entire life bars. This game could have been very decent had the completely unnecessary fighting engine and difficulty been properly tweaked. As it stands, it's nearly unplayable for any real length of time. When the Sega CD first launched in North America, it was packed with multiple games. You got Soul Feast, a CD-enhanced version of Soul Dece for the Genesis, as well as a combo pack-in that gave you Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective and Sega Classics Arcade Collection. This pack came in a dual CD case with each game's cover on the same side as the disc. Sherlock Holmes was a full motion video game that had two cases for you to solve by talking to people, finding clues, and ultimately presenting your case to the court. For what it is, it's one of the more interesting, if somewhat boring uses of video in a game. The real gem here is the Sega Classics disc, however. This compilation includes the arcade classics Golden Axe and Columns, as well as the console big hitters Revenge of Shinobi and Streets of Rage. The enhancements to these classics are entirely in the sound and music department, and honestly, some of them are hit and miss. Golden Axe has the music from the arcade version, which is welcome, but loses its two-player mode for some reason, and Columns features a catchy new theme song on the title screen. Most of the grunts and groans you hear in all these games have been replaced by newer ones, losing some of their classic appeal. When Shinobi pops his ninjutsu, you get this. instead of this. And players and enemies sound like this in the cartridge version of Streets of Rage. While they sound like this in the CD version. These are little things to be sure and they do not in any way ruin the excellent games each and every one of these titles were. This set was updated in later releases to include the additional game Super Monaco GP as well as replacing Sherlock Holmes with Echo the Dolphin. This pack was seen with hardware like the Sega CDX. Sega Classics saw a standalone release in Japan only much later in the Mega CD's life. Sony ImageSoft wasn't done giving you major bang for your buck in 1994, offering another double deal buy one get one free bundle that included the full motion video shoot 'em up Microcosm and the side scrolling beat 'em up Ultraverse Prime. Microcosm saw a standalone release for the Sega CD prior to this one. It's a shooter that has you flying over top of full motion video backdrops, concentrating entirely on blasting enemy ships. This pseudo 3D environment might have been impressive had it not been so washed out and plain looking, but you'd think flying around the inside of someone's body would look a bit more interesting. It's a product of its time and while it definitely can be fun for a bit, you won't be returning for more than a few tries. Ultraverse Prime is based on the Prime series of Malibu comics which followed the titled superhero in his quest to rescue his 13 year old girlfriend. Yep. If you don't know the story, you should read it, it's quite freaking weird. 
Anyway, you get a beat-em-up with a Superman-like character that plays like the Super Nintendo version of Konami's Batman Returns. Surely this is a must-own, right? Nope, not at all. Ultraverse Prime is a repetitive, unfinished piece of software that was just a few months of development away from becoming something special. The moveset is actually quite decent. You get a punch and kick combo controlled by different buttons, as well as a series of grapple moves like ground slams, whirlwind throws, head-to-head -head crunches, and wall slams to add variety. The problem starts right away with some nearly non-existent enemy variety. I mean, the developers had to realize that using the same enemies for an entire stage just didn't cut it. I mean, at least change it up with three or so different enemy types. There's no real special moves either. No screen clearing nukes, no super moves, no nothing. I mean, this dude has tons of powers in the comics. Where are they? There is also a big lack of stage variety. Everything looks the same and there are only a couple of sections where you fly. This leads to a gameplay experience where you are beating up the same enemies in the same looking stages for long periods of time. Even the boss encounters are weak, offering nothing but more sameness mashing the punch and kick buttons. Had there been a few more enemy types, a few more special moves, and maybe a stage or two that changed up the gameplay a bit, this could have been. No, this should have been a much better game. I mean, it even got the free comic books all wrong by giving you horribly digitized and nearly unreadable low-res images that look just disgusting. <laughs> Our final compilation was released just for the Wonder Mega, a combo system created by JVC in 1992 that saw a few different revisions, including a North American release under the name XI. Wonder Mega Collection is a compilation of four games released for the Mega Drive over its Game to Shoken service, a series of downloads that could be stored locally on a cartridge that was included with Sega's Mega Modem. Three of these games were included with the Sega Gamescan volumes. You'll get Flicky, Pyramid Magic, and Paddle Fighter, the same games I covered previously, as well as Quiz Scramble Special. I wish I could show you more of this one, but lacking the ability to read Japanese means all I can do is press buttons until I see Game Over. What is special about this disc isn't the games on it, but rather its rarity. Because the Wonder Mega was a pricey specialty system only sold in high-end electronic stores, Wonder Mega Collection is not something you'll see very often and can sell for nearly $100. Sega Games Can Volume 1 is much cheaper, so if you are looking to try some of these games out, I recommend you go that route instead. Like a lot of the Sega CD library, you have to dig a bit to get to the good stuff here. The Sega Games Can games are definitely worth looking at for something different, particularly Volume 2 and its 12 entries that had gems like Doki Doki Penguin Land. Heart of the Alien has the first out of this world and its difficult sequel if you want some serious challenge, and the Sega Classic releases are winners no matter what hardware they are played on. I'd even recommend the Three Ninjas Kickback Hook Bundle, as both these games are decent representations of their source material. The nice thing is, is that many of these are incredibly cheap nowadays if you are into collecting Sega CD and Mega CD games. The bundles in this episode are often no more than $20, and even the Sega Game Can games can be scored cheap if you are patient. At least fire these up on an emulator or a Mega SD and check them out. You may just find something worth playing. I'm Sega Lord X. thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.